All right, everybody, this is Ross, the fig boss. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Breba crop. We did do a video quite recently about my first figs of the year. We talked briefly at that video in that video about Brebas. We, we tasted a couple of varieties, a little Ruby. Uh, we had Jiwale Noir. Um, since then, I've done some cooking inside. I got to taste other varieties like Dotato. Uh, we tasted Sister Madeline's uh, Yellow, and also a variety called Salato. Today I have a variety here called um, Negra de Agde. This is a variety that doesn't get enough attention. It really should get a bit, think a bit more attention. My friend Jamie had let me try this fruit years ago. Um, at one of the Staten Island festivals and it was pretty good. She had seemed to really like it. My friend Danny actually really loves this fig and was raving about it a year or two ago, I can't remember. And um, other growers I know are fond of this variety. Uh, let me try it. I, nor, typically, by the way, the Brabas have longer necks, but typically this fig is more flat and not elongated. This is a really good shape. If it was always this shape, be very happy. It's pretty good. Hmm. So it's kind of mild, to be expected with Brevas. It reminds me a lot of a Sultane. Fruity, berry, not overly sweet, some figginess in there. It's not bad. You know, for a Breva, that's good. On a scale of one to five, I would say it's probably a two and a half. Maybe a two. Um, yeah, probably a two and a half. Yeah. If it had more time, it actually fell off the tree, but if it had more time to ripen, uh, maybe it could do some spectacular things. Now this variety, by the way, is showing some pretty good uh, impressive productivity as I actually have one in the ground over there that has figs all up and down the branches now that they've reached a you know more amount of light. This potted tree isn't that productive and I don't think it will really be a super productive variety here considering we just don't get enough light. But this is it. If I had more light, I'm sure all of these branches would be filled with fruits. So not that impressive in a pot, and it's not that impressive in lower light conditions. But back there, I'm telling you, there's probably maybe uh, close to 40 fruits on one of my in-ground trees there. So that's pretty impressive in a very small space, by the way. All right, so then the, the last fig here is um, Dotato. Got to find it. Here it is. I, you know, I would rather prefer to let this ripen longer. It is what it is. This rain will destroy this fruit. But you know what? That looks pretty darn good. That's not bad at all. I think this is probably gonna have some resinous flavor from the sap, just the fact that it's not super ripe. But I bet you it's quite sweet. Oh yeah, that's real good. That's way better than the other one. Um, because there is much higher sweetness it is better, more well ripened. This thing reminds me of a marshmallow with some honey on it. The perfect amount of sweetness in a marshmallow with just a touch of honey. It's real good. 
That's a really good Brava producer, by the way, Dotato. I would recommend it. This is one of my next varieties here to produce a Brava. It's still ah, kind of hesitant. I don't know what this fig is. Let me just pick it. This is one of the trees that a client of mine had given me to take care of. And um, as well as that Dotato, by the way. So I figured out what the other one was. Obviously it's Dotato. Um, I don't know what this is. Whoa. So this is a This is like a green Aishia. I was not expecting this. By the way, the trees that my client had given me are very, very productive. They are very mature. They needed a root pruning really badly. I like the form of his trees. I like what he did. He really knows how to take care of plants. So here's the inside of this. This definitely really does remind me of a green Aishia. I'm actually really happy I picked this. This should be quite good and who knows before the rain or after the rain it could have been slightly worse or a lot worse. So this one is uh, interesting. Went the wrong way there, sorry. Let's try it. So cheers to my, um, my client, Steve. He's got some pretty good figs because that Dotato, is a, that's a great fig um, and it's producing a lot. And it doesn't get enough credit, to be honest with you. I'm trying to find a Dotato that has the right shape. Um, I have Corinth. It seems to have more of an elongated shape. Maybe it doesn't split as often. I had myself a Dotato or a Kadota I got from Lowe's years ago. One of my first fig trees. Produced a lot of figs, but I remember one year that most of the crop was ripening at once. We had a stretch of rain that was like four or five days. It ruined the entire crop. The entire crop absorbed that water from the rain. It ruined the whole thing. So I got rid of it. Although it is very productive and has a lot of pluses to it, a lot of minuses to Dotato. And not every do strain of Dotato is the same. Just like this here is like a green Aishia and Adriatic type, not every strain of this is the same. Very, very different characteristics these figs can show. Let's try it. Huh. It doesn't taste like your typical Adriatic, it's not as intense. It's more mellow, more sweet, less complex. And then what is this thing? This is not a green Aishia, I think. It's quite good. It's a high quality piece of fruit. I mean, I'm telling you, if you ate this piece of fruit, even though, you know, the Dotato, by the way, the Negra Dogde was what, a 2.5? The Dotato is probably a three. This is probably also a three out of five. And I think a lot of people would enjoy this. I mean, um, they're not as, this was nearly, nowhere near as good as the little ruby. It's just not ripe enough. Nothing against the fig itself, the variety itself, but because of that, I can't give it a higher rating, but I do think that people would very much so enjoy this fruit, even though it was only a three out of five, or even you could say, could make an argument that it was a 2.5 out of 5. 
And the Negra Dog Day was probably a two out of five. So there's a lot of room for improvement right there. I mean, I would say a two out of five is a fig that you enjoy eating, but you're not gonna go out of your way to eat it. A one out of five you really just don't like. A three out of five is a good, an average good fig. Four out of five is, is you know, really above average. You're really impressed with it. Five out of five is it's just straight exceptional. Um, so the little Ruby Braba I had was probably a four out of five, which means it's above average and quite exceptional. And um, that one would blow anybody away. Anything that's a four out of five would blow somebody away that has never really tasted a fresh fig, that uh, just enjoys food in general. Maybe they don't necessarily love fruit or they don't have an affinity for fruit like I do. But if you enjoy fruits or you enjoy food, a four out of five is enough of an experience of eating something to really, really enjoy it. So that's the little video there on Bravest, guys. I appreciate you sticking around. I'm kind of staying in one place and just talking to you guys about these things. Um, you know, maybe a little boring, not for you guys at this point. You're, you're enjoying it, you got to this point, but maybe not for the average person. <laughs> Is it enjoyable? But, um, you know, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to learn, trying to teach you guys it's really all I've ever done since I started this channel is try to teach, encourage people, and inspire people to, uh, to grow this fruit. We'll see you soon, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Take care.